Greetings, fellow detectives. Wizard Kitten here, bringing you a new Nancy Drew analysis video. Today's video is brought to you by the patrons over at Mystique Manor and by all the official fellow detective channel members. If you too would like to support the channel and gain access to exclusive features, check out patreon.com slash wizardkitten to become a patron or click join next to the subscribe button to become an official fellow detective. The Nancy Drew series is crawling with suspicious characters, as one would expect in a mystery series. In mysteries, writers employ a variety of strategies to throw suspicion around and distract the reader or player. They may mention important clues only in passing, make it so that all of the characters could have committed the crime, thereby diluting suspicion, or create a red herring suspect that seems a little too obvious. By finding clues and interrogating suspects, good detectives can rifle through the mess of information and come up with a coherent solution to the case, but doing so requires careful attention to detail. It's incredibly easy to miss a crucial piece of information or write something off as normal when it could actually be the key to solving a case. Which is why today I'd like to talk about some of my favorite red flag conversations in the Nancy Drew series. When something is a red flag, it means that it is something requiring attention because it indicates a likely problem. For this video, I've identified my 10 favorite red flags that are identifiable only through character interaction. In these conversations, a suspect gives themselves away as untrustworthy simply by saying something that players can identify as suspicious. To clarify, I am not including red flags where Nancy finds a clue that proves that a character is untrustworthy because I would essentially be identifying the entire series. I'm also not including when Nancy finds a character doing something untrustworthy or accuses them of some wrongdoing, which they then deny. I'm looking for more subtle moments in conversations that could easily be glossed over, but are actually extremely revealing to an eagle-eyed detective. Before we begin, please note that this video will include spoilers, including plot spoilers for multiple Nancy Drew games. Proceed with caution. You have been warned. And without further ado, here are my top 10 favorite Nancy Drew red flags. Number 10, Dylan Carter in Tomb of the Lost Queen. While chatting with our boy Dylan, Nancy asks him why he is at the dig site. Now Dylan is evasive from the start, constantly changing the topic or redirecting Nancy by turning questions back around on her. This is suspicious enough, but we get a big red flag when Dylan, in passing, says that he got a ride from some traders who just happened to know the way, despite the fact that the dig site at Nefertari's tomb is brand new. Nancy jumps on this immediately, which is actually why this red flag is lower on the list because it's a bit more obvious. But regardless, Dylan refuses to talk any more about it. This inconsistency in Dylan's story, that he found people who knew of the site's existence when they shouldn't, reveals that Dylan has lied a lot more than we initially thought. It's more or less confirmed later in the mystery that he was involved in some black market dealings and not just a friendly tour guide something that we may not have known if Dylan hadn't let it slip. Number 9, Niobe Papadaki in Labyrinth of Lies Most of the characters in Labyrinth of Lies are just straight up lying to Nancy most of the time, but they're successful at covering their tracks. Grigor, Xenia, and Thanos basically never let anything slip, and Nancy only becomes suspicious of them by finding clues. Niobe, though, is a different story. She is not made of sterner stuff like the other three, and lets slip early on that she's so glad the troupe only has the one show. Nancy is surprised that all of this work is being done just for one show, at which point Niobe changes the subject and tells Nancy that she should leave. This is a big red flag, especially when Nancy checks with Xenia, who confirms that the shows are supposed to be happening all week. At this point, it's clear that something is not quite right at the Phidias Cultural Center, all thanks to Niobe's slip. 
number 8, Richard Topham in Secret of the Old Clock. Topham is clearly a sketchy character, a charlatan who profits off of the wealthy, lonely, and gullible citizens of Titusville. One could argue that his business and manipulative communication tactics are a red flag all on their own. But what seals the deal from a character interaction standpoint is when Nancy enters Topham's home and he greets her by name, despite the fact that they've never met. Nancy asks him how he knew who she was, and Topham responds by attributing his knowledge to his paranormal gifts. If one is to teach others how to develop and use their paranormal gifts, it's only logical that one must possess such gifts oneself. Besides being deeply arrogant, this statement is also incredibly easy to disprove, because in a conversation with Jane Willoughby just moments later, she reveals that she told Topham who Nancy was during the fire from the stove explosion. Paranormal gifts my foot. Once we know of this lie, it's a huge red flag, and it's impossible to trust Richard Topham further than you can throw him for the remainder of the game, and for good reason. It is heavily implied by the end of the game that Topham wrote a fake will, essentially stealing everything from Josiah Crowley and all of his intended beneficiaries. What a creep. Number 7, Dwayne Powers in Stay Tuned for Danger. When we meet Dwayne in person, it's clear that he is angry and honestly unraveling. When the conversation turns to Rick Arlen, Dwayne's voice becomes immediately tense, and he chastises Rick as an actor with no talent, a ladder climber who will use anyone to crawl his way to the top, a ladder he's sure to fall from one of these days. On the face of it, this could read as simply jealous. Dwayne is annoyed with Rick for ditching him and causing him to lose nearly all of his clients. But later in the mystery, when Lillian shows us the threat she received, one phrase notably stands out. That Rick is a phony, a ladder climber, and he'll fall so far down, no one will ever be able to find him again. Sound familiar? That's because it's nearly word for word what Dwayne Powers told us in his office. This is a huge red flag and is the icing on the Dwayne Powers is guilty cake. It's easy to miss, but a crucial clue. Number 6, Margarita Foberg in Phantom of Venice. Margarita certainly loves to gossip, tell stories, and throw shade, but she's always very careful to paint herself in the most flattering light possible. The way she tells it, she's very rich, famous, and popular, practically beloved by the social scene in Venice. Everyone wants to get close to her and soak up her influence. She sticks to her story, for the most part. But towards the end of the mystery, Margarita slips when she says that she fired Colin because she found out that he was using the most expensive materials for his restoration work instead of the cheapest. Margarita quickly tries to cover this up by saying that, of course, she didn't want him to use cheap materials, she just didn't want to be lied to. Uh-huh. Right. Red flag. It's clear at this point that we can't really trust anything that Margarita has to say, and that she's nothing but an insecure phony. Number 5, Guadalupe Comillo in White Wolf of Icicle Creek. Nancy doesn't get to speak much with Guadalupe, but when she does, Lupe mentions that she's at Icicle Creek Lodge to see birds. She can be found standing at the window with binoculars, and when Nancy asks about her birding, Lupe says that she's seen hawks, eagles, orioles, cardinals, and jays during her stay. On the face of it, this seems like a reasonable answer, but meticulous detectives can fact check this statement on the computer at the front desk. When Nancy goes to look at the computer, none of the birds that Lupe mentioned are around in the winter which means she couldn't have seen any of them. I love this detail, because Nancy doesn't mention anything out loud, which means we're free to draw this conclusion ourselves. It's a really sneaky hidden detail that outs Lupe as untrustworthy, which is later confirmed when we find out that she was lying to us and everyone at the lodge. She was not there for birding, but rather as an agent for Run Wild, Grow Free. 
Number four, Rachel Hubbard in Warnings at Waverly Academy. When Nancy first meets Rachel, Rachel responds by saying that Nancy must be Becca Sawyer and she's so glad that she got her message and will she please help her out with her project. She makes it very clear that she recognizes her as Becca Sawyer and is grateful for her help. Rachel is definitely cagey and uninterested in talking at this point, but things get weird when Nancy returns to her room and Rachel appears to have no clue who she is. Nancy reintroduces herself and Rachel passes this off as her mind going due to the stress of all of the studying and assignments. But this is a huge red flag. Combine this with the fact that every other student that we speak to at Waverly characterizes Rachel as flaky, confused, and forgetful, further reinforcing that something might be off. Turns out that we had good reason to be suspicious, because Rachel is not just one person, but two. This is still probably the best twist in the entire Nancy Drew series. Her interactive really waited until just the right moment to pull off this particular trope, and I'm so grateful for it. Number three, Malachi Craven in Creature of Kapu Cave. At the very beginning of this mystery, we are treated to a cutscene of someone, presumably Kane Okala, the rough-skinned man, destroying Quigley Kim's camp. When Nancy arrives at the camp, a tape recorder that captured the whole event plays back some banging and crashing in a horrifying growl or roar. Later, when Nancy is at the Healy Healy Research Center, Nancy overhears Malachi Craven getting a phone call with some undesirable news. His reaction? The exact same horrifying growl or roar that was recorded at Quigley Kim's camp. A man who growls is already a red flag, but in this plot, it's an even bigger one, because we now know that Dr. Craven was responsible for destroying Quigley's camp. Not only can we not trust him at this point, we should probably be at least a little scared of him. Yikes. Number two, Jane Willoughby in Secret of the Old Clock. Apparently, Titusville is full of unsavory characters, because this is the second character from Nancy's time-bending case to make this list. Jane Willoughby, Emily's guardian, was apparently best friends with Gloria, Emily's recently deceased mother. The two of them worked as dressmakers together and became very close. But when Nancy arrives later in the mystery with a dress in need of sewing, Jane says that she hasn't sewed a dress in years and wouldn't know what to do. She insists that she would ruin the dress, and she refuses to even give Nancy any tips. This is such a major red flag. Even if you haven't sewn a stitch in years, you haven't completely forgotten how it works, especially if it was something that you did professionally. Jane's absolute refusal to help is incredibly suspicious, which means none of us should have been surprised when she turned out to be someone else entirely. And finally, number one, Victor Lawsett in The Deadly Device. Honestly, there is a lot about Victor that is really suspicious from the get-go. If he's trying to avoid looking like a murderer, let's just say that he isn't doing a fantastic job. The real clincher, though, is when Nancy finds evidence that proves that Ryan Kilpatrick couldn't have killed Nico Jovic. Nancy calls Victor, the person who hired her to solve this mystery, to fill him in on the big breakthrough, only for him to be infuriated. Like Malachi Craven roaring into a tape recorder infuriated. This is already enough of a red flag for Nancy to know that this guy can't be trusted. You shouldn't be peeved when your detective makes progress in your murder investigation. But Victor then goes a step further and shows up at the Technology of Tomorrow Today lab and kicks Nancy off the case. He fires her for accurately identifying someone who didn't kill Nico. Excuse me? Red flag. Big one. A wonderful shade of scarlet flag the size of Texas. So there you have it, fellow detectives. My top 10 favorite red flags in character conversations. There were several additional conversations that I thought about including, so I would love to hear if you can think of any other red flag moments. There are also plenty of red flags that come up from finding clues and not from conversation. To summarize, I would say that the Nancy Drew series does a fantastic job of creating suspicion in the cases. 
There are many mysteries where it is difficult to deduce who the culprit could be, despite available clues. Even with red flags, several of the characters on this list were not the culprits of their respective mysteries, which just goes to show you can't trust anyone. Just kidding, that's not the moral of this video. Don't worry. The moral is that the Nancy Drew series is simply iconic and full of marvelously written characters, and I don't think I'll ever get sick of dissecting their stories and motivations. If you really enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like button or tipping me for the video with a super thanks next to the download button right beneath the video. If you would like to come join a fantastic group of fellow detectives at Mystique Manor as a patron for the channel, gain access to exclusive content, and support the making of more content like this, please check out patreon.com slash wizardkitten. I also have channel memberships with exclusive badges and emojis to use during streams and in the comment section. If you'd like to support the channel by becoming an official fellow detective, click join next to the subscribe button. Please feel free to follow the channel on Instagram or Discord linked in the description box down below. And as always, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more Nancy Drew and Sims 4 content. Thank you so much for watching, fellow detectives. I will see you soon.